to anchor your boat. Here's some tips and tricks for how we do it. Sailing. Birchens. Yeah. Hi, I'm James. And I'm Jack. We're Sailing Virgins. We're here in beautiful Petite St. Vincent and we thought it's a really good opportunity to give you guys some tips and tricks on anchoring. It's a real fundamental of sailing. There's no point going out sailing if you can't park the boat safely at night. But a lot of people still struggle with it. So we're just going to show you a few tips and tricks and how we do it. Yeah, so we're, we'll start by talking about where you anchor, uh, looking at the lee side of the island and so, so on and so forth, depth to anchor in, um, things like um, where you are in relation to other boats, so the whole where to anchor side of things. And then like a lot of the communication between whoever's up on the bow running the anchor and whoever's at the helm, you've got to have communication between those two. Yep, and then the actual drop. Um, how to make the drop uh, properly and, and of course counting the anchor as you go back um, and going back um, with the wind. So, so going up against the wind, dropping and going back with the wind. Yep. And then testing to see if the anchor is held properly. Yeah, that's essential. A lot of um, people either don't drop enough, and well, they won't drop enough anchor chain, chain generally, and then they won't test, and so they'll just hope for the best. Those, those two things are probably uh, the key things with anchoring, so we'll take you through them. Yeah, it'll make you sleep better at night. Absolutely. So let's go. Yeah. So we're looking around here. We're on the lee side of the island. That's a pretty good indication that you won't get wind. Apart from last night. Yeah, see that's the thing. Sometimes the swell is different to the wind. So last night we were on the lee side of the island, but we had a really rolly night because the swell was coming in from a different angle. So it's not always the case. It happens sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so now we're looking around for uh, sand. Um, it's a little bit weedy where we are here, even though it's quite clear water. It's a bit weedy, so we're going to try and find some sand. Uh, anchors always hold better in sand. In weed, they can sort of grab a little bit, but then they drag through the weeds. They just don't hold as good. Yeah. And so, um, and then we're thinking about other boats. Now we're really lucky here. There's hardly any other boats. So um, we've got a lot of uh, options, but sometimes it can get really busy. Um, there's a shot in Le Moran um, where it's just so many boats and you just, it's, it becomes difficult. It's always better for everyone if you can anchor away from other boats. Sometimes you, you don't have that luxury. Other things we're always going to be looking out for, we never ever want to anchor in coral. Obviously damages the reef, but it's going to cause you strife as well. You'll probably get your anchor stuck down there around something. And rocks, same deal. You don't want to anchor in rocks if you can help it because your anchor can get trapped under something. And unless you've got scuba gear or you're a great freediver, you might be uh, leaving, your, leaving your ground tackle down there. So as we're working our way up into the wind, because you're always pointing dead into the wind or into the current, whichever is the strongest factor when you're anchoring, uh, we're just going to tell you a bit about hand signals. So rule number one, what's rule number one? Always look good. Always look good. Uh, some do it better than others, but... Uh, <laughs> um, rule number one is always look good. So we don't want to see people up on the bow shouting at the person back here and the person here is shouting and they can't hear because the windlass is noisy. So hand signals work best. So basically we've, we want to count the chain that's going out, the person up on the bow. So they're going to be counting 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters. You might have painted sections on your chain or you might have uh, little plastic rings in there. Or you, you might could, just count it. And you can do that version of feet if you like. Like if you're talking feet, and each of 10 yep. feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, whatever works for you. Yep. And then along with that, we're going to be, okay, start dropping. That's down, up. We're going to be lifting the chain and stop. So that's, okay, stop. Just hold it there for a minute. We're going to see what it does. That's quite often when you're dropping, sometimes the bow will get blown off a bit. And we might say after 30 odd meters, just, just stop there for a minute. We'll just hold just so we blow back straight and then we can continue dropping. Yeah. All right, so we're up here at the anchor now and I'm just gonna show Celine how to gently get the anchor over the front. Because we have such an oversized Rockner anchor on this, if we just let it quickly over the bow roller, it smacks into the bow. So we're just gonna ease it over. All boats are different with that. Always want to tie our anchor locker open. Okay. So some boats you'll be.
be able to just let the anchor just straight over the front. With Libby, we just have to just have to ease it over a little bit. Super easy, nothing, nothing crazy. Okay, now we're ready to drop. So Celine, you're going to drop the anchor for me, and you're just going to remember to count the meters. Um, 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters. And remember the golden rule, always have an eye in the box because we don't want to be running out of anchor chain. So many anchors aren't actually connected to the boat. You just keep dropping, dropping, dropping. Next minute, it's all on the bottom and they're pretty hard to find. I've had a few mates, like two and a half grand, I think one mate lost when he lost his anchor over the front. Only in three meters of water, but bad viz, unlucky. So you always want to make sure you're completely stopped when you start dropping the anchor and you want to be moving backwards as you're dropping. You don't want to drop all the anchor in just a big pile. So uh, if there's absolutely no, well, almost no wind, sometimes you just got to give it a little blast in reverse just to start you moving backwards. Um, other times you just sit tight and the wind's going to blow you backwards. Cool, so we're stopped, so yep, start dropping. So when we're dropping, we need to think about scope, how much chain or, or road we're going to put out. A general rule is five to one. So in like 10 meters of water, we're going to put out 50 meters of chain. That's going to vary if there's like heavy weather, you might bump it up to eight to one. Uh, but also we, we, like to, we like to think more holding um, is better. So if you don't have to worry about swinging room, um, we like to empty the box. We like to get all 70 meters of chain we've got out because the more chain you have out, the more holding you have. So just to understand the rule of thumb of five to one is really kind of a rule of thumb. It's not hard and fast. And uh, you've got to remember the amount of uh, height above the water. So it's where your chain exits the boat. Uh, so let's say, I think we're in about four meters uh, of water here, three meters of water. We've got one meter above the boat. So we've got four meters. Multiply that by five, you want roughly 20 meters. Can you remember the last time we dropped 20 meters? <laughs> Never ever. <laughs> we, like, even though five to one's 20, we'll easily drop 30, 40, and if it's blowing hard, 50, 60 meters. Like, I think the shortest I'd ever, the, the less, least I'd ever put out would be 30 meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No swinging issue here, so uh, we have no problems with, with uh, emptying the box. Yeah. One more thing is if you're in tidal waters, then you need to consider the tide. So we're lucky here in the Caribbean, basically all over the Caribbean, there's really, there's that much tidal range. So we don't need to worry. But if you're in the UK or in uh, the Northeast of the United States, then tide is a, is a big deal. Uh, and your tidal rate, your, your, your ratio of five to one can rapidly become three to one if you've got uh, the wrong tide. And your depth can rapidly become <laughs> no depth. That's right, <laughs> yeah, so consider that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now comes time to test the anchor. We want to test our holding so that we can actually sleep properly at night. So I'm going to chuck it into reverse. Celine's up on the bow. She's going to be keeping an eye that the chain comes up tightly like this, builds up, and that it doesn't bump back down to being loose because that's going to be a sign of dragging across the bottom. She's going to be watching for that and she's also going to have a foot just on top of the anchor chain, safely in front of the windlass, it's fine. Uh, and she's going to be feeling for vibration. And it's quite, it's quite obvious when you are dragging up there what's going on. And then while I'm back here, so we don't want to rush, we don't want to just jam it in reverse and give a massive strain to the windlass. So we sort of build it up slowly, build it up slowly. And then I'm going to be back here working on a transit. So I'm going to be lining up two things here. I'm trying to decide whether it's a palm tree or a bungalow or a white sand beach. It's pretty tough here. Uh, but I'm going to be working out that if they stay in a straight line, that, do, that means that we're not moving backwards. But if they're moving out of line, that means that we're dragging and we're going to have to try to relay. So now that Celine's all done dropping the anchor, 
time to put the snubber on. We've just used an old bit of line that we had laying around. There are loads of different fancy methods, but the actual act of the snubber is just to take the load off the windlass. So at the end of the day, if this crappy bit of line breaks, not the end of the world. It's, in, it's on my list to build, make a fancy one. So I always like to get it on the clean first, always going to the furthest part of the load as usual. And then there are different methods. You can go out over the side. We don't have a nice spare lead on this boat. If we had a really nice fit for it to go out over, it could work or we could set up a bridle like catamarans have bridles, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, I send it out over the front. It doesn't take the load off of the um, roller that way, but it still does take the load off the windlass and make for a quieter night on anchor. out over the front and now uh, we're gonna have a quieter night on anchor because the chain isn't going to be rubbing over the roller there and more importantly our windlass there is gonna be happier in the long run So we're just lifting anchor now. Um, what you really want to be careful of when you're lifting the anchor is that you don't burn out your windlass. You always want to know where the windlass breaker switch is, just in case you do burn out the windlass. That breaker switch will flip and you have to know where to find that to flip it back on if you've been working it too hard. But you have eyes on the person up at the bow who's lifting the anchor. And we've got it in neutral revs now. Neutral revs, press in the button, and then we have it in revs, like 1500 RPM, just like when you're charging the batteries. And that gives enough charge to the electric motor of the windlass to work comfortably. But now you can see the wind's blown us back and the anchor chain up there is too tight to lift. So I'll quickly go back to neutral, I'll let the revs die, and then into gear, and then we'll give it a blast to get it moving forwards and in the direction we want and then back to neutral revs as quick as we can. You don't want to be idling up on it because then that's not giving enough charge for the windlass and you don't want to be blasting forwards for ages, ages, ages because then you'll run over the chain and it'll be rubbing against the bow. So a short blast is usually the best to uh, move you up on the chain enough. So lifting the chain, you've just got to make sure that the boat isn't being pulled forward by this. So I drive by pointing to the helm to tell him which way to go. And you can't go too much over the chain so that it scratches the hull. If, you do, if you're going there, you just want to stop, tell him to stop, let the boat come back and you'll be okay. That's really all it is. What I'm doing here is just kicking the chain to stop it pyramiding underneath. And then I've got a really good view of the windlass and everything here and I can see the helm. I find it's like a good position but everyone's got what they prefer. And the helm likes to know when we're off the bottom. We've just come off the bottom so I'm saying Jack, we're off the bottom. there's a bit of mud or something so you can just let it clean off for a bit and then every boat's different on the final bit of anchor uh, lifting of the anchor this boat in particular the anchor goes from there to um, horizontal it's pretty extreme but you know this is how we do it if we're doing any long passages I like to actually protect the anchor um, the windlass so I'll put a bowline around here and then do a round turn, two half hitches around here and that stops the, wind, the windlass being loaded um, all the time so now I can actually take it off a bit and the windlass isn't so hardcore and I know this is locked on 
So that's a little tip for longer passages. If you're just doing, you know, chartering for a week, you probably won't need this. We got it pretty easy here in Petite St. Vincent. It's um, nice and shallow, it's so sandy, the anchor's dug perfectly and there's hardly anybody around. But if you follow those tips, you're pretty much set no matter where you go. Yeah, so just remember, lay lots of road, lots of anchor, um, more than you, you think you need, if you, have, if you can for swing, and test. Always, Always test. test. Yeah. Okay, so till next time, see you later. See ya. Sailing virgins. Yeah.